Hi guys and welcome back to another Dr. Ace video and today we're going to be playing Ride 4 and today we're going to be back in the Donington National Circuit with the BMW M1000 Double R but today we're going to be trying to tackle this circuit with the BMW with a new controller and look at the state of that already we are <laughs> not as competitive with the DualSense controller or the PS5 controller as you may or may not know it and this was a frustrating one, a very frustrating one. I have already recorded everything here, I'm just doing the voiceover now, but I am so used to the DualShock 4 controller, I'm so used to the feeling and the, feed, the feedback and physics of the Superbike game and MotoGP 22, and I am not particularly enjoying going back on Ride 4, to be quite honest with you. The bikes feel incredibly awkward, and some of the things that happen just don't quite make me really much sense to me now since I've played much of the other games and I'm having a tough time and I thought this was one of the prime examples of having a target goal in mind can make things difficult. So for example for the newcomers, uh, the newcomers and the beginners and players who have some sort of aspirations of beating other people's lap times I can see why people get rather frustrated. I don't particularly care too much about trying to beat others, more so my own performance in making sure that the bikes look realistic so the content is interesting and the riding is smooth but I, I cannot say the riding is going to be smooth in this one I felt all over the place just really all over the shop and it was quite frustrating very frustrating but we are going to persevere I'm going to try and at least get close to my previous best which was a 102481 with the BMW M1000 RR here in Donington National and as you can see right now it's just not coming to fruition yet to be 1.3 seconds off in one lap is not too bad, I'm not really that disappointed about that, but I just don't like the way I look riding right now. It looks it looks bog standard, it looks quite amateur, and I like to profess myself as being a little bit better in this game than just amateur or beginner, but the way the bike's moving, the way the lack of control, there's no feeling on the PS5 controller for me, it just looks awful, and <laughs> I can't tell you how frustrating this particular time trial challenge was. I've done maybe 10 or 11 laps here today to try and get close or beat the lap time. You'll have to stick around if you want to see if I beat it or not. But the difference with controllers, my goodness. I get this question quite a lot. Which controller is the best to be fastest? It's just the controller you know the most. That's all it is. For me, I've decided to jump on the DualSense controller only because I'll be in Birmingham this weekend for the, well, for the entire week actually at Motorcycle Live 2022 and we're going to be at the Ride 4 BMW trailer and we're going to be promoting the game, we're going to be playing the game and I'm also going to be showing some of you guys, if you attend, how to play the game and how to improve. But, all the controllers will be on PS5s and unfortunately for myself I use the PS4 controller so I did feel like it was time to improve on the PS5 so then when it comes down to it I can use the PS5 controller and I can be very competitive. So, so far, not competitive, um, not a bad lap time, don't get me wrong, I'm just a perfectionist, that's the only problem that I have, and I would say that's one of the worst th sort of traits you could have, but it's also a good trait, it, it, it certainly has its caveats and certainly has its positives, but that is the ultimate reason of why I'm using the DualSense controller, I cannot wait to get back on the DualShock, however, maybe I'm just better off sticking with the DualSense because the more the console generation moves on, the less likely it is to get hold of dual sh shock controllers. So if you have any issues, I can't just go out and buy a PS4 controller. I had the same with the PS3 when I wanted to get an official controller when I was playing Fallout New Vegas a long time ago. But even coming out the corners, the, the acceleration on the right trigger, it has a, a small dead zone compared to the minimus, or practically minuscule dead zone on the DualShock 4 controller. So I'm, I'm trying to balance the acceleration and still keep it on smoothly but there's also a gap where there's no input. I find the same with the Xbox controllers as well, there's a certain dead zone that no input goes in at all and the PS5 has something very similar. I, I do believe that is due to me playing on PC and PC not accounting for the haptic feedback. That's my own only real assumption for that but you know, at the end of the day, we're 103.001 right now, four laps in, with a lot of crashes. Every single cut you've seen so far has been due to a crash, and it's been frustrating, but I'm still going to push. I'm still going to push, and 
hopefully we can improve because I don't want to go to the Birmingham event and be one of the slowest there because I'm so out of it and just not in the zone for Ride 4. So I'm going to be playing a lot of Ride 4 from now till next week, till what, the 28th of November? So I'm hoping when I next start doing more Ride 4 content, you'll see that uh, I'm either back to my old self on this game or close enough to. Right now, I don't like the fact I'm slow, but we are improving. We're up to a 102.9, so we are getting there. We're trending in the right direction, but it is taking a lot of laps and a lot of crashes and a lot of mistakes. I just don't like my consistency in this one. That's, that's the only thing I can really say. I, I can appreciate the frustrations that some of you guys have when you come to the guides and you're asking a question and you watch me do it and then you go, how the hell does that happen? I'm trying the same thing. I, I get it. It is it is frustrating when you want something to work and you just can't quite get it. And that's how I feel today in this particular time trial. I can't say I enjoyed this one, to be quite honest with you, and it's not often I would ever say that. But right now, I really want to play Superbike 22 and MotoGP again. <laughs> I just... I don't know, maybe I've fallen out of love with Ride 4, maybe I'll soon capture it back, I, I don't know. But I never felt strong in anywhere in this circuit. I love Donington Park, and I used to be very competitive. Yeah, I may still be competitive, it just might be because I'm using the new controller and it's just feeling different. But as far as the lap times go, we are beginning to chuck in some decent lap times now. It's, um, if we can continue getting close to the 102s. And overall, I'd say that's a relative success, but we are five tenths of a second down to our previous best, which was set quite a long time ago now. That was set probably, what, just after July, when I went to Brands Hatch, I think that's right, maybe into Donington Park, probably the, the week I did to the Donington Park video. And that's probably how long it's been, but I must mention once again, if you guys want to come and see me in Birmingham at the NEC at the uh, Motorcycle Live, definitely come on down. There's going to be a competition there. If you get the fast lap time of the day, you do win tickets to a BSB hospitality event. So, it's well worth it. And in some days, there's even going to be Bradley Ray there. So, come on down, come and see me, come and see Brad Ray, and come and see everything that is on to offer. But here, this is where I almost gave up with this controller. Bringing on the power, I'm just trying to find the balance of where and how much power needs to be applied. And I just, at that point forgot everything I knew about the DualSense controller and went to the DualShock 4. I brought on the power as much as I would with the other one and just completely went off the track. Went caught on the rumble strip, went off the circuit and just had head in hands. I was just so annoyed and disappointed at myself for just failing to realise I was using a different controller. The, the vibration with this controller is significantly different, but let's start talking then about the actual racing lap times and ride for again, rather than the controller and my somewhat grievances with the DualSense, uh, DualSense controller. But coming out of McLean's, we're quite strong. I do still feel a good rhythm from McLean's into Coppice. I don't think I'm too bad there. Comparing it to how I usually do with Superbike 22, you've got to think about that one a lot more on Superbike, I do find, than I do with this particular part. The, the beginning section into Sector 1 from Old Hairpin, or at least before then, Crane and Curves going into the Old Hairpin, I do feel quite strong on Ride 4. And I don't think it looks as ugly as I'm probably thinking it does, but wheelies are an issue. Anti-wheelie 1 has been enabled, but I still can't seem to stop the BMW from wheeling. I did a very short video a few moments ago with the Ducati Panigale V4R, and it was the exact same situation. I don't ever remember needing electronics so much after playing Superbike and now coming to ride 4 back again. I really do now need to start considering using the... Um, the electronics that the anti-wheelie I did try upping by one which usually I have turned off and traction control I did actually leave at zero but now upon reflection could have been wise to improve that and just to increase it I know with the first couple of laps I did when I was just before I was actually beginning to record I was slipping all over the place the rear tire was on fire by just half a lap and I thought that's very very strange I tried a, a few combinations of tires in this one from the soft rear to the medium rear to the soft front to the hard front and ultimately I found that maybe a one or two laps with a soft and medium is okay, but when you're going for that ultimate lap I do need to consider soft front and medium rear, but across the line we'll go in a moment's time and getting close. We are getting close to this one, it's just... I, at this point I don't really care about beating the 102481 which we set way back yonder, I'm just thinking now of improving the 1029 
when you're that close to improving and you get close and close and close and close and it just doesn't result in an improvement it, it's frustrating so at this there's just one to get the lap time now so I can call it quits and <laughs> then be done with the Donington National until I go to Birmingham on Friday. So lap 9 then ladies and gentlemen coming out to McLean's for turn 7 and now into Coppice for the 8th corner here in Donington with a tenth of a second down so we've just got to be careful now with the acceleration brought it on a bit too abruptly there. I am finding I'm bringing on the tucking button a little bit too early as well. We're now going breaking pretty firm into Goddard's. I think that's too deep this time around. It is too deep. We have compromised our speed into the final corner. And once again, bringing the power on too early is causing the rear tyre to go sideways. And we must, we must avoid that. Every single time we go sideways like that, we're just losing a significant amount of time. So we've got to improve on that. Probably could consider improving the traction control. But here on lap 10, Got to get this right now. Keep it into the right hand side. Rear tyre still squirming all over the place. Bike is just not stable. Did it really look like this when I was playing a few months ago? I, I don't know. <laughs> I have to compare and do some videos. But right now, I can tell you my riding style doesn't look good. I'm not particularly happy with this, but hey ho, it is what it is. Into turn six and now into the right hand side for McLean's. Not a bad entry there, actually. Bringing on the power. I might get a slight wheelie. I don't mind the slight wheelie like that. We can still control it without too much issue, but downshifting into coppice there for turn 8, bring on the power, try and avoid the rear, oh look at the rear wheel, it's just absolutely booking and weaving the dip in the track there, pushing on the, or the tuck in too early and bringing on the power, it's just too much, but we're trying to get the brakes right this time around, it's messy, it's definitely messy, a quick upshift into second to avoid the wheelie, and we should improve the lap time, it's not going to beat our best, but thank goodness I got the feeling and sensation of improving a lap time again. It had been too long, or at least it felt that way. So, guys, let me know what you think about returning back to Ride 4. Let me know what you think about changing controllers, and let me know how, how serious you are about your riding style. Are you a perfectionist like me, or is it just me being too sensitive and too passionate about Ride 4? But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know in the comments section down below. If you want to see more content just like this, let me know, hit the like button, it's the best way to tell me, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and ciao for now. Oh hi, didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.